Hey guys, welcome back. For today's video, I'm gonna show you how I remove some of my SFX looks in the past, as well as hopefully give you some tips and tricks to safely remove SFX makeup yourself and what kind of products to look out for and what's useful. So the first one I'm starting with is a foam latex prosthetic that was blended with latex along the edges and was applied with Prozade. Now, despite how fun it usually does look to kind of just, you know, find an edge and tear a prosthetic off. And, you know, after a long paint, it, it probably seems like it'd be the satisfying solution. It's probably not your best option, seen as depending on how much, you know, adhesive you have down, how it's kind of reacted with your skin, you could end up tearing those like top layers of your skin. You could cause a reaction. So moving slowly with a proper remover is definitely gonna be your friend here. So what I like to do is I do kind of try to find an edge at the beginning, like you can see, and then with the remover on a q-tip i like to start kind of pushing that into the underneath of the prosthetic and then just moving slowly around all the edges this can be a little bit tedious but it's really good to make sure that it's kind of just softly letting go of your skin the adhesive removers will not only be dissolving the adhesive they're also creating a bit of a lubricant between the prosthetic and your skin so it's going to kind of have an oily texture as more space under the prosthetic becomes available i like to kind of switch over to using my fingers get more of the product on there and then just push it under one thing that you'll see in pretty much every removal today is this like circular motion with your fingers. The reason for this mainly being that having the adhesive remover is absolutely key, but you also want to kind of create this little bit of motion that helps the adhesives, the prosthetic, the materials, whatever's on your skin, it helps it kind of just let go and helps pick it up without doing any kind of tearing or pulling at your skin. By doing these circular motions, you're going to create this friction to make things kind of release from your skin without actually, you know, ripping away at anything. Now for this look, some of the last things I had was I had done some washable glue stick over my eyebrow and hair area to kind of keep it flat and protect it from any latex being put on it. That will just come out in the shower. It's a washable glue stick, so it comes off with soap and water. But anything else you might also just want to take a makeup wipe to. Um, if you were using alcohol-based makeup like I did for a lot of this look, you're going to need an alcohol makeup remover, which is either 99% alcohol itself or an activator. So you can kind of rub that over the area as well. And then usually from here, you can kind of jump in the shower and get the rest of it. Following the foam latex prosthetic is probably the more common method of using a little bit of latex and tissue to create wounds. A pretty good classic for Halloween and what a lot of us have on hand more likely than not. So a lot of the steps are the same here. You kind of want to try and find an edge of the little wound you've built up and then slowly try and get the remover underneath. One thing that's quite different though about removing latex to removing prosthetics is when you're trying to remove prosthetics, for the most part, you're actually just dissolving and affecting the chemical structure of the adhesive itself. For latex, it can't be dissolved or broken down. So what you're really doing is just trying to create that lubricant and that barrier between the latex and your skin so that it will let go a lot easier. This actually is pretty simple because latex itself is not an adhesive. It just has some tacky qualities which allows it to stick to your skin on its own. So having a little bit of remover 100% helps it release and makes it a very easy process. The only thing to note with latex is that if it gets in any of your exposed hair, whether that's eyelashes, eyebrows, or hairline, it will adhere to it and is very hard to remove without kind of just losing the hair. So definitely be careful with that before you apply latex. All I did here after I removed the latex pieces was hop in the shower. And this is often what's kind of left. The stuff around the eyes, because a lot of eye makeup is a little bit more waterproof and meant to hang on all day and you might get a little bit of extra staining or if you're using alcohol paints, you might have some of that hanging out, but most of it comes off with just a good old shower. And from here, all you have to do is take care of the few tricky areas, such as in the ears, if you painted your ears, always kind of a hard one to clean properly. And then if you have any staining along your arms, um, oftentimes maybe on the underarm, kind of near the armpit, tends to get a little bit of staining. So just using a proper makeup remover usually solves this. And here I just included a quick example, again, of just removing latex and tissue. This one, I'm actually just using a normal makeup remover, so you don't really need an adhesive remover. It's just good to have on hand. But this one is just a really oily makeup remover. Same idea, get that edging and then kind of push it under to get it to let go of your skin. And then with latex, you oftentimes will get left with some residue and extra latex that kind of just gets left behind after you remove something like this. So again, this is where those circular motions will really come into play and help you just kind of lift the last little bit off your skin. It'll kind of ball up and roll into itself to let go.
An easy one to remove is nose and scar wax, kind of a pain to work with, but actually really easy to take off. It is usually simple to just kind of scrape it off. It sounds harsh, but honestly, it's just kind of slowly removing it with a tool that will not, you know, either puncture or scrape your skin. I like to use a flat ended spatula because it really is a waxy substance. It's not gonna dissolve by any kind of remover. It's just kind of actually getting it off of your skin. So usually it's just kind of a, a good little bit of scraping. And then you can again, use those handy dandy circular motions to collect any stuff you might miss. And then if you have anything left over after that, such as on this one, I had a little bit of alcohol paint left over. You can just kind of remove that and you're good to go. And finally, tips to removing third degree silicone, which is a two part silicone that you mix together. This actually does harden when it's on your skin. So all you're trying to do here is essentially get an edge up and then it should all kind of come off in one piece. I did also have fake silicone glass with this wound, so I have to make sure to remove that as well. But again, just trying to get a little bit of that remover or again, an oily makeup remover underneath the prosthetic piece, just kind of lubricate and moisturize your skin and it should let go and come up easily. And that is pretty much it. I hope this video can be helpful for some of you. I hope maybe you learned a few new things about how to remove special effects products and different prosthetics. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm happy to get back to them for you guys. As always, I really just wanna stress that please try and be kind to your skin, especially when working with SFX products. Be sure to patch test stuff before you use it if it's a new product to you. And hopefully after this, also invest in a good remover. I will have a list in the description for different options that are fantastic removers. Hopefully you can find one that will work for you. But that is it for now. Please let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Thank you so much as always for watching. I of course will see you next video. So until then, bye guys. Thank you.